When Roy Wilkins joined the NAACP in 1931, it must be remembered that this was two years after the Great Depression had descended on this country. There was tremendous unemployment among blacks, far, far higher proportionately than among whites in the country. There was also a tendency to try to blame the blacks for various kinds of things that were happening. It wasn't necessary for an individual actually to commit a crime. All he had to do was be suspected and he could be lynched. The theory was that you could maintain a special place for black people, a special place for white people. This would satisfy the Constitution of the United States. That was a spurious doctrine, but it had a great uh, power in those days. For example, all of the public schools of the South and in some cities of the North were segregated on the basis of race. Roy Wilkins was a part of the team, which was made up of Walter White, who was then the secretary of the NACP, Roy Wilkins, and Thurgood Marshall, who is now a justice of the United States Supreme Court. It was their objective to try to eradicate uh, these kinds of unjust things. In 1948, there was uh, a sharp, uh, upward revision in the way black people felt that they would come out. Uh, nothing hopeful, but uh, an improvement over what had been. The post-war period uh, left us with a lot of unemployment in this country. It left us with uh, returning uh, military people who had been off fighting a war for democracy. And it was very clear that those who had been fighting for human justice around the world were in no mood to come back to their own country and find such things as segregation based on race. It was then that the NAACP, which had been following a program of attacking segregation on a kind of piecemeal uh, basis, decided that there had to be a frontal attack on the so-called separate but equal doctrine. It would take a landmark decision by the United States Supreme Court to overturn the laws that kept black children separate from white children in schools. Roy Wilkins worked with Thurgood Marshall and other NAACP lawyers to devise a strategy for a Supreme Court test. They enlisted expert witnesses who testified about the psychological and social harm of segregation to black children. They argued that racial segregation in the schools violated the United States Constitution. On May 17, 1954, the court handed down a momentous decision. In the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facilities are inherently unequal. The NAACP had been instrumental in winning the most significant civil rights victory since the end of slavery.